Welcome to the National Science and Math Quiz. Today's contest is the ninth in the 116th stage of competition. The contest is between Achimota School and Mawuli School. Welcome back, viewers. Today's contest is the ninth in the 116th stage of competition between Achimota School and Mawuli School. Achimota School is on my left and is represented by SS4. Benjamin Adji Ajiti, SS4. Daiko Jubosu, SS4. You are welcome, gentlemen. Achimota School is located in Achimota, Accra. It was established in 1927. It's a mixed school. They've been participating in the National Science and Math Quiz right from the beginning. On my right is Mawuli School, represented by Bruce Rebecca, SS4. Carlos Dokenu, SS4. Angote Johnson, SS4. You are also very welcome. Mawuli School is located in Ho. It was established in 1950. It's a mixed school. They've also been participating in the National Science and Math Quiz right from the beginning. And their motto is... Head, Hat, Hand. Most welcome. Contestants, the competition comes to you in four rounds. The first round is a round for fundamental concepts. The questions in this round are very simple and straight to the point. We expect simple and straight to the point answers. You are to answer your question in one attempt. Let's begin. We'll start on my right with Mawuli School, but before we begin, preamble to both schools. So when I get to you, uh, I will expect an answer from you. We'll start with you, as I said, but your preamble. Assume log to the base 6 of 7 is 1.09. And log to the base 6 of 5 is 0 0.90. You are going to evaluate. Mauli School, evaluate log to the base 6 of 35. Yes, Carlos. 1.99. That's right. <laughs> Achimota School, evaluate log to the base 6 of 7 over 5. Timothy. 0 0.19. That's right. <laughs> Mawuli. What is the process of separation based on differences in boiling points of substances? Carlos. Fractional distillation. That's right. <laughs> what is the process of separation based on differences in solubilities in a solvent? Yes, Benjamin. Chromatography. That's incorrect. For a bonus. Yes, Carlos. Crystallization. Crystallization. <laughs> Your major question. What is the trajectory of an electron moving with constant velocity in a uniform magnetic field which is parallel to the electron velocity? Carlos. Circular path. That's incorrect. For a bonus. The right answer is a straight line. Your major question, your own question. What is the trajectory of an electron in a uniform electric field perpendicular to the velocity of the electron? Yes, Benjamin. Circular part. That's incorrect for a bonus. Yes, Johnson. It's a straight line. No, that's incorrect. The right answer is a parabola. Your own question. What is the name of the structure with which weevils bore their way into grains? Rebecca. Rostrum. That's right. <laughs> what is the name of the structure with which cotton stainers obtain food from plant seeds? Benjamin. Rostrum. No, that's incorrect. For a bonus. 
Rebecca. Proboscis. That's right. For the next pair of questions, when I get to you, I will give you a quadratic function. I will give you a quadratic function. Please find the domain and the range of the quadratic function. Mawuli, your quadratic function is y is equal to x squared minus 9. Carlos. The domain is um, y is such that y is a member of row numbers. And the range is. For a bonus. Yes, Timothy. The domain is, such, is x is such that x belongs to all real numbers. Whereas the range is y is such that y belongs to all real numbers. Where y is greater than 9. No, not for a bonus. The domain is all real x values, x such that x is a member of the set of all real values. And the range is y such that y is greater than or equal to negative 9. Your own quadratic function. y is equal to negative x squared plus 5. Yes, Timothy. The, the domain is x, is x belongs to all real numbers. And then the range is y is such that y belongs to all real numbers. Where y is less than or equal to 5. That's right. <laughs> Preamble to both schools. Preamble to both schools. SO3 decomposes to SO2 and oxygen in a reversible reaction as follows. 2 SO3 gas plus 200 kilojoules of energy goes reversibly to 2 SO2 gas plus O2 gas. I hope you got the preamble. Now, Mauli, predict the effect of increasing temperature on the equilibrium concentration of SO2. Yes, Carlos. Um, the reaction is in, uh, endothermic, so increasing temperature will uh, shift the equilibrium position to the exothermic side. Endothermic side, sorry. You have not answered my question for a bonus. Yes, Benjamin. The reaction is endothermic, so increasing te temperature will move to the exothermic side, which is the left side. So more, to S more SO3 will be produced. Yes. I did not ask you for all those explanations. I asked you what will happen to the concentration of SO2. You could have told me simply increases and I would have given you the three points. Anyway, your own question with the same preamble. Predict the effect of pressure on the equilibrium constant of the reaction. Yes, Benjamin. Increase in pressure will cause the equilibrium position to move to the side with less number of moves. So more SO3 will be produced when the, pres when the pressure of the system is increased. For a bonus, yes, Johnson. Increase in pressure will lead to the production of more SO3. That's the reactant. Whilst decrease in pressure will lead to the production of the products. That's SO2 and, uh, SO2 and then the oxygen gas. No. Please listen to the question and answer the question. I asked you for the effect of pressure on the equilibrium constant. I didn't ask you about concentrations. Hmm? The equilibrium constant will not change. It will be the same. Mauli School, listen to the question carefully. If a block and tackle has three fixed and two movable pulleys, what will be the mechanical advantage and velocity ratio if the pulleys are light and frictionless? Yes, Carlos. Velocity ratio will be 5 and mechanical advantage will also be 5. That's right. Listen carefully. 
two pulleys, diameter 5 cm and 10 cm, are to be used to transfer power from shaft A to shaft B, which rotates at a higher speed. Which pulley must be mounted on shaft B, and how much faster does B rotate? Yes, Darren. The small, the, the one with five cent, the diameter five centimeters will go faster. And should be mounted. Yeah, and, and the way it should be mounted. No, I'm passing this on for bonus. Yes, Johnson. The smaller, the uh, pulley with the smaller diameter should be mounted on the shaft, and it will, it will move faster since it moves twice as much as the 10, cent, uh, 10 centimeter diameter pulley moves. That's incorrect. What you will do is to mount the 10 centimeter on B, and then B will rotate at twice the angular speed of A. Your own question, Mauli School. In photosynthesis, what does the abbreviation NADP stand for? Yes, Carlos. Nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate. That's right. <laughs> In photosynthesis, what does the abbreviation RUBP stand for? Ribolus by phosphate. That's right. <laughs> a rectangular field has a perimeter of 110 meters. The length is 5 meters shorter than thrice the width. Find the dimensions of the field. I'm expecting length and width. Carlos. The length is root 10 units and the width is 5, root 10 minus 5 units. That's incorrect. For bonus. Yes, Timothy. The length is 10 units and then the weight is 15 units. No, that's incorrect. The right answer, the length is 40 meters and the width is 15 meters. Achimota School. A rectangular field has a width that is 90 meters less than the length. The perimeter is 1,280 meters. Find the dimensions of the field. Again, I'm expecting length and width. Timothy. The, the, the length is... Um, the length is um, 640 meters, and then the weight is uh, the, weight, the weight is 550 meters. That's incorrect. For a bonus, oh Carlos. The length, the length is 225 meters, and the weight is 315 meters. No. The right answer. The length is 365 meters. The width is 275 meters. Give the color changes zinc oxide will go through when heated strongly. Yes, Johnson. Zinc oxide will turn colorless when strongly heated and when cooled down, it will turn white again. Incorrect. For a bonus. Yes, uh, Benjamin. Zinc oxide is yellow when heated and it's white when cooled. Or when cooled. Yes. <laughs> Please answer your question directly and answer what is here, please. Dilute H2SO4 is added dropwise to a solution of calcium 2 plus. What will be your observation? Yes, Dari. There will be a white precipitate of CaSO4. Two out of three. White precipitate insoluble in excess. Name the modes of heat transfer. Yes, Johnson. 
conduction, convection, and radiation. That's right. Give the difference between conduction and radiation of heat. Yes, Benjamin. In conduction, the, um, the, there should be a medium for the transfer of heat. But in radiation, there is no medium for the transfer of heat. That's right. <laughs> Mauli School. What name is given to the specialized leaves found at the basis of flowers or flower stalks? Bract. Yes, Rebecca. Bract. <laughs> name the structure that connects the stigma to the ovary. Yes, Dari. The style. Is the style. <laughs> Mauli School. Rationalize the denominator. Two plus root three all over two minus root root three. Yes, Rebecca. Rebecca. Into, into yeah. Carlos. Four plus four root three. Four a bonus. Yes, Timothy. Minus seven plus root three. No. The right answer is seven plus four root three. Your own question, Achimota School. Rationalize the numerator. Three minus root five all over three plus root five. Timothy. My, minus two all over fourteen plus six root five. That's incorrect for a bonus. Yes, Carlos. Four over fourteen plus six root five. Yes. <laughs> Group of compounds are used for communication in living species. What group of compounds? Carlos. Hormones. That's incorrect. For a bonus. Yes, Timothy. Pheromones. Pheromones. <laughs> Name one functional group in carbohydrates apart from hydroxy groups. Benjamin. You have ketones or alkanones. Alkanones. <laughs> Give the characteristics of the image formed in a magnifier. Yes, Johnson. The image is enlarged and virtual. Two out of three. <laughs> the image is virtual erect, magnified on the same side of the lens as the object. At Motor School, what is the magnification of an object which is viewed two centimeters from a convex lens whose focal length is four centimeters? Timothy. One over two. That's incorrect. For a bonus. Carlos. One over four. That's incorrect as well. The right answer is negative two. Last pair of questions. Where in the human body would you find the choroid? Rebecca. The head. I'm not giving that to you for a bonus. Yes, Dari. In the eye, beneath the sclerotic layer. In the eye. Your own question. Where in the human body would you find the corpus luteum? Dari? It's in the ovary. Yes. That's the end of the first round. At the end of the first round, Mauli School has 26 points, Achimota School has 27 points. <laughs> the contest is too close to call at this point. We have three more rounds.
round two. This is our round for the problem of the day. You will receive one problem. You will have three minutes in which to present an answer, a single answer from each school. The problem of the day is worth 10 points. Let's turn over our sheets and read the problem of the day together. Problem of the day. Sketch a ray diagram showing light incident on, passing through, and emerging from a 60-degree glass prism. Show the case of minimum deviation and normal incidence. Second part. Explain why for a parallel beam of white light, minimum deviation occurs only for one wavelength. Contestants, this is your problem of the day. You may begin. <laughs> Contestants, please take your answers and present them on our boards. Contestants have presented their answers. Before we award the marks, let's look at the ideal solution from our consultants. First, we are to sketch a ray diagram that shows the incident light on the prism for two different conditions, normal incidence and minimum deviation. At minimum deviation, the light passes symmetrically through the prism and so, if you are to look at the sketch, you will see that there's an incident beam on one side of the prism. The light ray passes through and then is brought out exactly symmetrically as the incident beam. For that three points. For normal incidence on the 60 degree prism, which is made up of ordinary glass, with refractive index approximately 1.5, light is actually totally reflected at one phase because 1.5 multiplied by sine 60 is greater than 1. This is the condition. So in this particular case, you have the normal incidence, the light ray hitting the side of the prism, going right through the prism until it reaches the other edge, and then it is totally reflected, and it comes right out for having that right three points. The second part was to explain why for a parallel beam of white light, minimum deviation occurs only for one wavelength. Well, we have conditions for this as well. Okay, the refractive index of glass depends on the wavelength of the, and the condition for minimum deviation can be fulfilled only for one wavelength if you use a polychromatic beam of light on the prism. So it has to do with the refractive index, the refractive index of the prism and the conditions that are necessary for 
this to take place. So nearby wavelengths will be close to minimum deviation. Okay. So this is what we were expecting. This is the ideal solution from our consultants. Now our contestants, Hachimoto School, they have the diagram for minimum deviation right, but they did not recognize that we're going to have total internal reflection for the normal incidence. So that is wrong. And they did not attempt uh, the second part at all. So we give them three out of ten. <laughs> Mauli School has the diagram for minimum deviation right. Uh, they also did not recognize that we're going to have total internal reflection. So we have a wrong diagram for normal incidence. Then for the second part, long explanation, requiring a lot of space, explaining what white light is made of and all sorts of things, but I do not see any mention. I don't see any mention of the conditions that must be satisfied and the reference to the refractive index. Three out of ten. That's the end of the problem of the day and the end of round two. Round three. In this round, I'm going to be throwing statements to the schools. When you receive your statement, please consider it carefully and let me know whether the statement is true or false. If you are right, two points. If you are wrong, you lose a precious point from scores you have already accumulated. You may choose not to respond, in which case your statement will be passed on to the opposing school for the benefit of the full two points. Let's begin this time on my left with Achimota School. Your statement. The velocity ratio of a lever is always greater than one. Yes, Benjamin. False. False. The mechanical advantage of a lever is always greater than one. Rebecca. False. False. Distance gives a sharp image in a pinhole camera. Benjamin. False. Oh no, Benjamin. In a simple microscope, a single convex lens is used to produce an enlarged image located at the near point of the eye. Yes, uh, Johnson. It's false. Oh, no, Johnson. Both alpha and beta particles are deflected in a magnetic field. Yes, Benjamin. True. Yes. Beta particles are more penetrating than gamma rays. Yes, Rebecca. It's false. It's false. Whereas magnesium trioxocarbonate for is insoluble, the sodium analog is soluble. Benjamin. It's true. Yes. <laughs> the heat and light of the sun are due to the reaction of hydrogen nuclei. Rebecca. Rebecca. It's true. Yes. <laughs> Motor School. Two congruent figures are similar. Benjamin. It's true. Yes. The area of a circle with diameter d is pi over 2 d squared. Yes, Rebecca. It's false. It's false. A sequence is a series. Benjamin. False. False. The number one is the identity for the set of real numbers under division. Rebecca. 
It's false. It's false. <laughs> Members of the phylum Chlorophyta have roots, stems, and leaves. Yes, Benjamin. False. False. <laughs> the red algae are mostly marine with very few freshwater species. Rebecca. It's true. Yes. <laughs> Last pair of statements. Mosses undergo alternation of generation. Benjamin. True. True. <laughs> Rhizopus can be seen with the naked eye. Rebecca. Rebecca. It's true. Yes. <laughs> the end of the third round. At the end of the third round, Mahuli School has 42 points. Achimota School has 43 points. <laughs> the contest is going to be decided in this final round. Round four is our round for riddles. I'm going to be reading out clues. The schools are to solve the riddles. When the school is ready to solve the riddle, they have to alert me. They do so by ringing their bell. May I hear your bell at Motor School? Thank you. And yours, Mauli School? Thank you. When you ring the bell, have your answer ready. Rebecca, I will not call you twice. All right, if you solve the riddle on the first clue, five points. If you solve it on the second clue, three, no, four points. If you solve it on the third or any clue after that, three points. Let's begin. There are four riddles in all. The first one, I am a diagram. I am a set of points in the plane. Each point represents a pair of measurements. Yes, Maoli School. Correlation. That's incorrect. We continue for your benefit, Achimota School. As my name suggests, my points are scattered all over the plane. Associated with me are correlation and linear regression. Mind you, I am a diagram of points scattered in the plane. Who am I? Darryl. Scatter diagram. It's a scatter diagram. I read all my clues, three points. Next riddle. I am an electrical device. I do not obey Ohm's law. I am now commonly made with two types of material joined together. Atimota Sister. That's incorrect. For your benefit, Mauli. One of those is called N, but it has nothing to do with north. I allow the flow of electric current in one direction, but not the other. So I am used to construct circuits that convert alternating current to direct current. Who am I? Mauli school. Diode. It's a diode. <laughs> Again, I read all my clues, so three points. Next riddle. I am an organism described as having a flattened body. In spite of that, I am active and feed on insects, worms, and other small animals. My body is divided into segments, and from each segment arises a pair of walking legs. Achimota School. Centipede. Centipede. <laughs> they solved the riddle on the third clue, three points. Final riddle. All scientists, especially chemists, either love me or hate me. I am not an insurance agent nor a political party agent but I am surely an agent for change. Like a bank, 
I always give away my valuable currency. When I do so, I reduce indebtedness of my clients towards the community. If the electron is my currency, then who am I? Yes, Mauli. At home. No. We just reaction. Oh, the right answer is reducing agents. Reducing agents. That's the end of the fourth round. At the end of the contest, here are the final scores. Mawuli School has 45 points. Achimota School has 49 points. <laughs> Mauli School, you gave us a very good contest. Thank you for that. And thanks for being here. Unfortunately, I have to say goodbye. Best wishes. Achimota School, congratulations on winning the contest. You have your work cut out for you. I shall look forward to seeing you next stage of the competition. All the best. Viewers, we've seen a very good contest, very competitive indeed. I'm expecting another good one next time when we bring you Yas Santua Senior High School and Infant Sipim School for the 10th contest, 10th contest in our 116th stage of competition. Thanks for joining us today and see you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.